just because Governor Ducey of Arizona said that, hey, practices and sur surgical specialties can now begin performing elective surgeries, it is never quite that easy. In this quick video, I'm going to share with you how we hopefully have overcome the hurdle of getting asymptomatic preoperative COVID-19 testing for your patients who may need surgery. Hello, my name is John Lin. I'm actually a, a urologist here in Gilbert, Arizona. I, pra I practice at Sunrise Urology. I figured all of us are trying to help our patients to schedule them for their surgeries. Unfortunately, COVID-19 put a big wrench in the way we take care of our patients. Governor Ducey about a week ago said that, hey, surgical practices, you can now schedule elective surgeries. Well, nothing with the government is ever that easy, is it? So what happened? Governor Ducey said, you can, have, you can perform these surgeries, but it is up to the hospitals and the surgery centers to come up with their protocols and get an exemption from the Arizona Department of Health Services. Now, if you're watching this and you are in a different state, you may have different requirements, but I'm sure a lot of your facilities are going to require COVID-19 testing for your asymptomatic preoperative patients. So hospitals are now required to ask for exemption from the Arizona Department of Health Services. And some of the requirements are that you have enough PPE or personal protective equipment to take care of any urgencies that you may have in the next 14 days. And you have the protocols necessary in place to minimize the risk of COVID-19 transmission. Well, what ended up happening is that these hospitals and surgery centers now want to have COVID-19 testing for every single preoperative patient. Now, nobody, no surgical specialty has protocols in place because we're not primary care. We have not done any sort of testing typically for most of us. So we are all in a mad scramble trying to figure out how to actually do this. And I was in the same boat. My practice was trying to figure out about a week ago, great, starting May 1st, we can now perform elective surgeries. How do we go about satisfying the requirements by the surgery centers and the hospitals? That is the big concern because now they are requiring COVID-19 testing preoperatively for all of our patients. Now, if you guys have any questions regarding how this process is done, or you have any questions in general, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them during this uh, live stream. Logistics, I'm gonna talk about logis logistics of actually how to get this done. Hospitals will test their own preoperative patients, meaning if you have a surgery scheduled to be done at the hospital, they will perform the COVID-19 testing for you at their facility. However, if you are trying to do this uh, a surgery, schedule a uh, surgery for a uh, preoperative patient at a surgery center, you are kind of on your own in trying to figure out how to actually get the preoperative COVID-19 testing done. So this video will hopefully help you and give you all the answers when it comes to ordering for the hospital, you will need to know the, uh, the ICD-10 and also the CPT code. I will have that later on in the, uh, in the video. We'll discuss that. In this video, I'm going to quickly talk about the who, what, where, when, and how of, these, uh, of the uh, COVID-19 testing. So first of all, whom to test, on whom to perform this testing. And that will be preoperative asymptomatic patients. All of our patients will have gone through COVID-19 questionnaire. They have not been exposed. They have not traveled to endemic areas. So that screening is negative, meaning they are not at risk. It is this population that we are testing. Unlike what's been done before, in the past, healthcare providers and symptomatic patients, hospitalized patients, they're the ones mainly being tested. Now we are testing healthy people undergoing, about to undergo elective surgery. So this is a little bit different and the protocol will be a little bit different. Uh, once again, any questions, uh, please ask in the comments uh, below. So what type of personal protective equipment do you need to use when actually obtaining the COVID-19 testing uh, for, from these patients? I'm gonna go over a, a lot of the details on how to actually do the test, where to do it, and how to order it and all that stuff. Say that you are actually doing the procedure in your office. 
Who's going to do it? How are you going to protect that person when it comes to PPE? Well, keep in mind, in the past, they tested symptomatic patients. We are testing asymptomatic patients, those who are not suspected of having COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. In the past, every everyone should have gowned up, had an N95 respirator, had a face shield, and all sorts of protective equipment. But we are testing asymptomatic patients. So I do not think that is currently necessary. And you can just use the typical protective equipment like a face mask and, a, and an and eye protection when you are testing these asymptomatic patients. And that's what we've decided to do. You do not need the, the full-on <laughs> Uh, suit or or gown and all that stuff. Now, here's the other question. What exactly is the test that you need to run? Do you need to run the serology test, the antibody test, or do you run the SARS-CoV-2 virus test? And that is the correct answer. It's the RT-PCR or reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction test. That is the test that you want to run not the antibody test, not the serolo serology test, uh, at least that is not being required at the hospital or at the uh, surgery center where I operate. Of course, everyone is gonna know, wanna know what is the CPT code and what is the ICD-9 that you need to use, right? So here's your answer uh, right here. ICD-10 will be Z11.59, encounter for screening, for other viral diseases, and the test or the CP the CPT for the actual uh, testing is eight seven six three five CPT eight seven six three five infectious agent detection by nucleic acid DNA or RNA. So that will be what you order if you are doing this at the hospital. However, if you are ordering this at a lab such as Sonora Quest, they have their own test number, and that test number is 907078 for SARS-CoV-2 RNA QL real-time RT-PCR for COVID-19. It was uh, released at their client gram from March 11th of this year. So that will be the test that you order if you're ordering it from Sonora Quest. So again, if you guys have any questions or uh, comments, please leave them below and I'll be monitoring them. And um, Next thing, next up, where do patients go to get tested? Can the patients go, can an asymptomatic preoperative patient go to the lab or do I have to do it here in the office? Well, certainly hospitals are taking care of their own pre-op patients. So the patients would, my pre-op patients about to undergo surgery at the hospital, they would get an order from me or I'll fax it, my staff will fax it directly to the hospital and the patient will, will simply show up at the hospital and get their their uh, swab done, the nasopharyngeal swab. But what if the patient has to get tested elsewhere, say pre-op patient for the surgery center, then what happens then, right? Well, we try to get the patient to go to the uh, labs to get the uh, nasopharyngeal swab done. That ain't gonna happen. Uh, our, the SonoQuest is not doing these asymptomatic tests from the uh, calling and uh, emailing that we've done. And we've collaborated with other offices and trying to figure this out. Uh, they are not testing asymptomatic patients. So the testing will end up having to be done by somebody else. Well, primary care doctors are probably not gonna do this. So we ended up deciding that we are going to take care of our patients preoperatively about to undergo surgery at the surgery center. We decided to have the, uh, have the patients come here at the office to perform their nasopharyngeal swabs. And then you're gonna have to figure out, well, where do we get the test kits and all that stuff? Hang on, it's coming up. <laughs> so we decided to have the patients come here to obtain their nasopharyngeal COVID-19 RT-PCR test samples. So where do we get the kits, right? Because it's not just the urine culture that we're used to here at Sunrise Urology, it's actually a nasopharyngeal swab. We're not used to getting NP swabs. ENTs or, or otolaryngologists may be very comfortable in doing that, primary care doctors maybe, but certainly not urologists. So we had to figure out how to actually do this test and it's not very difficult at all. Now, those, of, th those docs may have to show your nurse uh, 
nursing staff or your medical assistants on how to actually perform this test, there's an, if you Google uh, or actually go to YouTube and look for a video, it's a very, very straightforward, simple procedure. You can simply take the tiny, tiny little swab and then put it directly into the nasal pharynx and you have to get all the way back into the nasal pharynx and give it a few twists and then remove it. But um, where do we get the kits and, and how do we, you know, how do we get the kids? Because the labs are closed. You can't just show up at the lab and they're gonna say, here, here are the kids that you want. This ain't normal times. This is COVID-19 public emergency times. So we scrambled. Uh, we couldn't go to the lab to actually get to test. And uh, thankfully, Vanji, our Sonora Quest representative, was nice enough to drop off some test kits for us. And uh, we were able to uh, perform these uh, preoperative tests. Uh, to uh, take care of our patients before their surgeries anticipated to be done at the surgery center. And this is what the uh, test kits look like. It comes with, with a little uh, medium culture tube and a very, very thin uh, stick with a swab at the very, very end. And that is the, that is the swab that you place into the nasal pharynx to take care of these uh, patients and, and getting these samples. Um, what else? Now, who is going to be obtaining the nasopharyngeal swab? I simply demonstrated, I figured out how to do it. I demonstrated the technique to my medical assistants and they have done it very, very easily without any problems uh, to take care of our patients. You, if you have a nurse or a nurse practitioner that's comfortable doing it, uh, certainly have them do that. Now, where do you send the specimen after you obtain the sample? Well, you want to send it to wherever, from whom you got the swabs. And I sent it back to uh, Sonora Quest, which was the lab who uh, really helped us out uh, during this uh, crunch. Again, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below. How long does it take to, for the results to come back? Because you, you have to think, okay, the, the patient's about to have surgery and you want to get these tests done shortly before to satisfy the surgery center's requirements, which... In, in in all frankness, it's kind of silly because you can get the test on, like say five days before surgery. The patient could have gotten, gotten infected between now until surgery and become an asymptomatic viral shedder. And then the patient undergoes surgery, right? So what is really the meaning of that SARS-CoV-2 test? Anyway, that's, that's a question that you all have to answer yourselves. But we are simply trying to comply and try to get our patients taken care of. So we're jumping through the hoops, just like anything that we've done in the past in healthcare is to jump through hoops. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. We are still going to take all the precautions like we've done in the past for hepatitis, for HIV, and in this case, for SARS-CoV-2. So it takes about three days for the test to result, and you want to consider that when you are scheduling patients for surgery. Obviously, you want to make sure that they are asymptomatic. They, they tested negative on your SARS-CoV-2 questionnaire, and then you schedule them for surgery five days prior, and then you want to get the, the uh, uh, um, COVID-19 uh, MP test done, hopefully at the beginning of that five days, so that you get the results in three days, which will probably come back negative and the patients will, will undergo surgery. Because as you all know, it takes a lot of work and a lot of coordination, a lot of resources to schedule one simple elective surgery. Lastly, uh, how do you document in your electronic health records when the patients come into your office to get the MP swab? Well, it is a non-billable procedure that you're doing because it is part of the global for your surgery. And some people may be thinking, well, I'm just going to try to bill a 99211. Well, you need to make sure that there's a medical necessity for that 99211. You don't bill that 99211 just because you can. And performance, just getting the MP swab from the patient is, I do not think, unless there's something else going on with the patient, I do not think it qualifies for you to bill a 99211. So I am not charging the patient when I perform the NP swab because I believe that it is included as part of the global. When it comes to documentation, obviously you want to document that in your EHR. I've elected to just simply document that in patient messages. Patient came in for their preoperative 
asymptomatic COVID-19 test, and I obtained a sample through the right NAIR. Patient tolerated the procedure very well, and uh, that's that's that. So I, that's where I decided to document it. You can figure it out in your EHR where you want to do the documentation for the performance of the procedure. Uh, finally, I want to thank my staff, my office administrator, Irma, and also Deb at Santan Surgery Center for all of their assistance during this crazy time and trying to figure out how to get COVID-19 testing done for our preoperative patients at the surgery center. At your facility, you may have other criteria, so make sure you comply and adhere to those. Hopefully, we can take care of our patients in short manner, and I'm so glad that we are uh, now open for elective surgery starting May 1st. Be well, take care. Any questions, comments, please leave them below. Bye-bye.